Translated by Bhikkhavodi. Suttacentral.net and Suttas.com. Part 2 The Book of Causation, Nidanavaga Samayuta, Chapter 5 Kisapa Samayuta, with Kisapa, 046, SN.16.1 SN.16.6, SN.16.1 Santutha Sutta, Content at Savathi. Pikhas, this Kisapa is content with any kind of robe, and he speaks in praise of contentment with any kind of robe, and he does not engage in a wrong search, in what is improper, for the sake of a robe. If he does not get a robe he is not agitated, and if he gets one he uses it without being tied to it, uninfatuated with it, not blindly absorbed in it, seeing the danger in it, understanding the escape. Pikhas, this kisapa is content with any kind of alms food, with any kind of lodging, with any kind of medicinal requisites. And if he gets them he uses them without being tied to them, uninfatuated with them, not blindly absorbed in them, seeing the danger in them, understanding the escape. Therefore, Pikhas, you should train yourselves thus, we will be content with any kind of robe, and we will speak in praise of contentment with any kind of robe, and we will not engage in a wrong search, in what is improper, for the sake of a robe. If we do not get a robe we will not be agitated, and if we get one we will use it without being tied to it, uninfatuated with it, not blindly absorbed in it, seeing the danger in it, understanding the escape. We will be content with any kind of alms food, with any kind of lodging, with any kind of medicinal requisites, and if we get them we will use them without being tied to them, uninfatuated with them, not blindly absorbed in them, seeing the danger in them understanding the escape. Thus should you train yourselves. Pikhas, I will exhort you by the example of Kisapa or one who is similar to Kisapa. Being exhorted, you should practice accordingly. Kisapa is content with robes, alms food, lodging, and medicines. SN.16.2 Anatapi Sutta, Unafraid of Wrongdoing. Thus have I heard. On one occasion the Venerable Mahakasapa and the Venerable Sariputta were dwelling. Dot at Baranasi in the deer park at Isapatana. Then, in the evening, the Venerable Sariputta emerged from seclusion and approached the Venerable Mahakasapa. He exchanged greetings with the Venerable Mahakasapa and, when they had concluded their greetings and cordial talk, he sat down to one side and said to him, Friend, it is said that one who is not ardent and who is unafraid of wrongdoing is. Incapable of enlightenment, incapable of nibbana, incapable of achieving the unsurpassed security from bondage, but one who is ardent and afraid of wrongdoing is capable of enlightenment, capable of nibbana, capable of achieving the unsurpassed security from bondage. In what way is this so, friend? Here, friend, a bhikkhu does not arouse ardor by thinking, if unerous and evil unwholesome states arise in me, this may lead to my harm, nor by thinking, if evil unwholesome states that have arisen in me are not abandoned, this may lead to my harm, nor by thinking, if unerous and wholesome states do not arise in me, this may lead to my harm, nor by thinking, if wholesome states that have arisen in me cease, this may lead to my harm. Thus he is not ardent. And how, friend, is he unafraid of wrongdoing? Here, friend, a bhikkhu does not become afraid at the thought. If unerous and evil unwholesome states arise in me, this may lead to my harm, nor at the thought, if wholesome states that have arisen in me cease, this may lead to my harm. Thus he is unafraid of wrongdoing. It is in this way, friend, that one who is not ardent and who is unafraid of wrongdoing is incapable of enlightenment, incapable of nibbana, incapable of achieving the unsurpassed security from bondage. And how, friend, is one ardent? Here, friend, a bhikkhu arouses ardor by thinking, if unerous and evil unwholesome states arise in me, this may lead to my harm, and by thinking, if wholesome states that have arisen in me cease, this may lead to my harm. Thus he is ardent. And how, friend, is he afraid of wrongdoing? Here, friend, a bhikkhu becomes afraid at the thought, if unerous and evil unwholesome states arise in me, this may lead to my harm, and at the thought, 
if wholesome states that have arisen in me cease, this may lead to my harm. Thus he is afraid of wrongdoing. It is in this way, friend, that one who is ardent and afraid of wrongdoing is capable of enlightenment, capable of nibbana, capable of achieving the unsurpassed security from bondage. Sariputta approaches Kasapa and asks how it is that only someone who is keen and conscientious can realize nibbana. SN.16.3 Kanjapama Sutta, Like the Moon At Savathi Pikhas, you should approach families like the moon drawing back the body and mind, always acting like newcomers, without impudence towards families. Just as a man looking down an old well, a precipice, or a steep riverbank would draw back the body and mind, so too, Pikhas, should you approach families. Pikhas, Kasapa approaches families like the moon drawing back the body and mind, always acting like a newcomer, without impudence. Towards families. What do you think, Pikhas, what kind of Pikho is worthy to approach families? Venerable Sir, our teachings are rooted in the Blessed One, guided by the Blessed One, take recourse in the Blessed One. It would be good if the Blessed One would clear up the meaning of this statement. Having heard it from him, the Pikhas will remember it. Then the Blessed One waved his hand in space and said, Pikhas, just as this hand does. Not get caught in space, is not held fast by it, is not bound by it, so when a pig who approaches families his mind does not get caught, held fast, and bound amidst families, thinking, may those desiring gains acquire gains, may those desiring merits make merits. He is as elated and happy over the gains of others as he is over his own gains. Such a pig who is worthy to approach families. Pikhas, when Kasapa approaches families his mind does not get caught, held fast, or bound amidst families, thinking, may those desiring gains acquire gains, may those desiring merits make merits. He is as elated and happy over the gains of others as he is over his own gains. What do you think, Pikhas, how is a Pikhas teaching of the Dhamma impure, and how is his teaching of the Dhamma pure? Venerable Sir, our teachings are rooted in the Blessed One. Then listen and attend closely, Pikhas, I will speak. Yes, Venerable Sir, those Pikhas replied. The Blessed One said this, a Pikho teaches the Dhamma to others with the thought, oh, may they listen to the Dhamma from me. Having listened, may they gain confidence in the Dhamma. Being confident, may they show their confidence to me. Such a Pikho's teaching of the Dhamma is impure. But a Pikho teaches the Dhamma to others with the thought, the Dhamma is well expounded by the Blessed One, directly visible, immediate, inviting one to come and see, applicable, to be personally experienced by the wise. Oh, may they listen to the Dhamma from me. Having listened, may they understand the Dhamma. Having understood, may they practice accordingly. Thus he teaches the Dhamma to others because of the intrinsic excellence of the Dhamma, he teaches the Dhamma to others from compassion and sympathy, out of tender concern. Such a Pikha's teaching of the Dhamma is pure. Pikha's, Kasapa teaches the Dhamma to others with the thought, the Dhamma is well expounded by the Blessed One. Oh, may they listen to the Dhamma from me. Having listened, may they understand the Dhamma. Having understood, May they practice accordingly, he teaches the Dhamma to others because of the intrinsic excellence of the Dhamma, he teaches the Dhamma to others from compassion and sympathy, out of tender concern. Pikhas, I will exhort you by the example of Kasapa or one who is similar to Kasapa. Being exhorted, you should practice accordingly. Kasapa approaches families like the moon. With humility, keeping his distance, and not getting involved. So when he teaches, it is with pure intentions. SN.16.4 Kulu Paka Sutta, A Visitor of Families At Savathi Pikhas, what do you think, what kind of Pikho is worthy to be a visitor of families and what kind of Pikho is not worthy to be a visitor of families? Venerable Sir, our teachings are rooted in the Blessed One. The Blessed One said this, Pikhas, a Pikho might approach families with the thought. 
May they give to me, not hold back. May they give me much, not a little. May they give me fine things, not shabby things. May they give me promptly, not slowly. May they give me considerately, not casually. When a bhikkhu approaches families with such a thought, if they do not give, he thereby becomes hurt, on that account he experiences pain and displeasure. If they give little rather than much, if they give shabby things rather than fine things, if they give slowly rather than promptly, if they give casually rather than considerately, he thereby becomes hurt, on that account he experiences pain and displeasure. Such a bhikkhu is not worthy to be a visitor of families. Pikhas, a bhikkhu might approach families with the thought, when among others families, how could I possibly think, may they give to me, not hold back. May they give me respectfully, not casually. When a bhikkhu approaches families with such a thought, if they do not give, if they give casually rather than considerately, he does not thereby become hurt, he does not on that account. Experience pain and displeasure. Such a bhikkhu is worthy to be a visitor of families. Bhikkhus, Kasapa approaches families with such a thought. Thus if they do not give, if they give casually rather than considerately, he does not thereby become hurt, he does not on that account experience pain and displeasure. Pikhas, I will exhort you by the example of Kasapa or one who is similar to Kasapa. Being exhorted, you should practice accordingly. Some monks approach families in the hope of receiving fine gifts or respect, but not Kasapa. SN.16.5 Janasutta, Old. Thus have I heard. On one occasion the Blessed One was dwelling at Rajagaha in the bamboo grove, the squirrel sanctuary. Then the Venerable Mahakasapa approached the Blessed One, paid homage to him, and sat down to one side. The Blessed One then said to him, You are old now, Kasapa, and those worn out hempen rag robes must be burdensome for you. Therefore, you should wear robes offered by householders, Kasapa, accept meals given on invitation and dwell close to me. For a long time, Venerable Sir, I have been a forest dweller and have spoken in praise of forest dwelling, I have been an alms food eater and have spoken in praise of eating alms food, I have been a rag robe wearer and have spoken in praise of wearing rag robes, I have been a triple robe user and have spoken in praise of using the triple robe, I have been of few wishes and have spoken in praise of fewness of wishes, I have been content, and have spoken in praise of contentment, I have been secluded and have spoken in praise of solitude, I have been aloof from society and have spoken in praise of aloofness from society, I have been energetic and have spoken in praise of arousing energy. Considering what benefit, Kasapa, have you long been a forest dweller, and spoken in praise of arousing energy? Considering two benefits, Venerable Sir. For myself I see a pleasant dwelling in this very life. And I have compassion for later generations, thinking, may those of later generations follow my example. For when they hear, the enlightened disciples of the Buddha were for a long time forest dwellers and spoke in praise of forest dwelling, were energetic and spoke in praise of arousing energy, then they will practice accordingly, and that will lead to their welfare and happiness for a long time. Considering these two benefits, Venerable Sir, I have long been a forest dweller, and have spoken in praise of arousing energy. Good, good, Kasapa. You are practicing for the welfare and happiness of the multitude, out of compassion for the world, for the good, welfare, and happiness of devas and humans. Therefore, Kasapa, wear worn-out hempen rag robes, walk for alms, and dwell in the forest. The Buddha points out that Kasapa has grown old and urges him to give up his ascetic life and stay in a comfortable monastery. SN.16.60 Vadasutta, Exhortation, 1. At Rajagaha in the Bamboo Grove. Then the Venerable Mahakasapa approached the Blessed One, paid homage to him, and sat down to one side. The Blessed One then said to him, Exhort the Bhikkhus, Kasapa, give them a Dhamma talk. Either I should exhort the Bhikkhus, Kasapa, or you should. Either should give them a Dhamma talk or you should. Venerable Sir, 
the bhikkhus are difficult to admonish now and they have qualities which make them difficult to admonish. They are impatient and do not accept instruction respectfully. Here, Venerable Sir, I saw a bhikkhu named Banda, a pupil of Ananda, and a bhikkhu named Abhinajika, a pupil of Anuruddha, competing with each other in regard to their learning, saying, Come, bhikkhu, who can speak more? Who can speak better? Who can speak longer? Then the Blessed One addressed a certain bhikkhu thus, Come, bhikkhu, tell the bhikkhu Banda and the bhikkhu Abhinajika in my name that the teacher calls them. Yes, Venerable Sir, that Pikha replied, and he went to those Pikhas and told them, the teacher calls the Venerable Ones. Yes, friend, those Pikhas replied, and they approached the Blessed One, paid homage to him, and sat down to one side. The Blessed One then said to them, Is it true, Pikhas, that you have been competing with each other in regard to your learning, as to who can speak more, who can speak better, who can speak longer? Yes, Venerable Sir. Have you ever known me to teach the Dhamma thus, come, Pikhas, compete with each other in regard to your learning, and see who can speak more, who can speak better, who can speak longer? No, Venerable Sir. Then if you have never known me to teach the Dhamma thus, what do you senseless men know and see that, having gone forth in such a well-expounded Dhamma and discipline, you compete? with each other in regard to your learning, as to who can speak more, who can speak better, who can speak longer. Then those Pikhas prostrated themselves with their heads at the Blessed One's feet and said, Venerable Sir, we have committed a transgression so foolish, so confused, so inept were we in that, having gone forth in such a well-expounded Dhamma and discipline, we competed with each other in regard to our learning, as to who can speak more, who can speak better, who can speak longer. Venerable Sir, may the Blessed One pardon us for our transgression seen as a transgression for the sake of future restraint. Surely, Pikhas, you have committed a transgression so foolish, so confused, so inept were you in that, having gone forth in such a well-expounded Dhamma and discipline, you competed with each other in regard to your learning. But since you see your transgression as a transgression and make amends for it in accordance with the Dhamma, we pardon you for it. For it is growth in the Noble One's discipline when one sees one's transgression as a transgression, makes amends for it in accordance with the Dhamma and undertakes future restraint. The Buddha invites Kisapa to teach the monks, but he is reluctant, since certain students of Anuruddha and Ananda have been competing to see who can teach better. And SN 046